Welcome to our demonstration on clustering MySQL on VMware Data Services Manager. So here is our provider portal. We can see that we have some databases already deployed. We can see that we have some vSphere environments which have resources for us to deploy databases onto. And we have some fine-grained namespaces which has more granularity over those resources. Like I mentioned, there are a number of databases already deployed. But these are all Postgres databases. We have some VM plans defined as well, but we may not use those when we go ahead creating our MySQL cluster database. So let's go ahead with the create database. And as I said, the purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to do a MySQL cluster deployment. I'm going to choose one of the namespaces with our vSphere resources. We're going to select MySQL as the database engine. We're going to give the virtual machine that's going to hold the MySQL database container a name and then all of the rest of those details there we will leave at the default for the default database name, default admin name, and so on. So we saw VM plans, but in this case, we're going to go ahead with uh, configuring memory, CPU, and so on uh, manually. We're also going to set some configuration options. These are all pre-configured for us as well. And you can see that in this version of the uh, data service manager there is an option to do database clustering we will come back to that we won't do that just yet we just want to have a look at some of the other settings here such as the alert settings the additional configuration settings like tls and database configuration options and if you're happy with all of that you can just click continue to create a standalone mysql database however as i said the purposes of this demonstration is to create a clustered MySQL database. So what I need to do is I need to add two read replicas to this database in order to have it fully clustered. So that's the first one. Um, I'm putting them in the same namespace as the primary, as you can see there, NS1. So it's keeping them together on the same resources, but you could distribute them across resources as well. Now, clustering with MySQL uses InnoDB or InnoDB, and for that, we need a virtual IP front end or load balancer virtual IP front end for the database. And so with all that information in place, we can initiate the creation of the database, which you can see progressing there with lots of information about how the database deployment is going. We can speed things up. I'm not going to keep you hanging about looking at all of this deployment, but you can look at all of these operations in detail and see each of the steps that is involved in the creation of the database. So now if I take a look at the cluster settings, I do and see indeed see the primary and the two read replicas, and the HA status will enter a complete state when all of the replication status between the read replicas and the primary is in an active state. So that looks good. I appear to have all of the information that I need to have. So what I can do now is just have a look at the database, make sure that there's no uh, events or errors associated with it, what operations have taken place, such as the automatic backup, which you can see here. So we do a full backup of the database when it's initiated. We can check the maintenance schedules and policies, which were defaulted when we created the database, but we can modify them here as well. We can see the virtual machine information if we needed to get direct access to the virtual machine. The credentials are available there. And once again, returning to the cluster settings, we have everything that we need in order to gain access. So let's try and gain access. So we're going to access the database DB as a service or AAS with the username DB AAS and the password that's available there. So I'm just using the MySQL client on Windows. You can see I'm connecting to the IP address, the clustered IP address. I'm using the database DB as AAS uh, port 6446, which is the clustered read write port, and then logging in as DB AAS and the password as we saw there. So if I do a show process list, I can definitely see that this is clustered. You can see the InnoDB um, uh, group replication data stream entries there as well. And if I query the performance schema for the replication group members, I can see one primary, which is my initial primary, and then my two read replicas, which are both in a secondary state. And that's how simple it is to set up a clustered MySQL database in VMware Data Services Manager.